know who I am. Thriller. City. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Hey, Turn this out now. Let this shit see in. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. DJ T Rex. Yes, all right, man. Hey, how you feeling today? That's what I'm talking about, man. It is what it is. Hey, we're going to have a wonderful show, man. I got some amazing guests. But first, let me introduce my co-host, man. Uh, he is the godfather of the crank movement. And he's my first cousin, man. My blood cousin, man. Y'all give it up for the one, the only, Lil Playboy. Hey, one thing about it, podcast, she's in the house. She one of the finest co-hosts I've ever had in my life. Y'all give it up for the one and only, Armani Talks. Yeah. And, yo, the guest of honor in here today, man, he is a philanthropist. Uh, 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 he is a, uh, a dream maker. Uh, uh, he is a, uh, a rapper. Uh, he's a producer. He's an entrepreneur. He's a millionaire. Uh, he wears so many different hats. He is a keeper of bad bitches. <laughs> he is a nigga that takes care of all of his kids and all of his baby mamas. Yeah, I'll, probably, I'll say that one now. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all give it up for Ugly Money Nietzsche. Nietzsche. <laughs> Not Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Nietzsche, baby. Love, Come man. on, man. Love, hey, man, introduce brother. your co-host, bro. Hey, man, you know... um. You know, we got this show called Trigger Alert where we get, you know, we get triggered every now and then. And so, you know, uh, you, you and Lil Playboy came on my show last night. I think it's only right that me and my co-host come on your show and we turn up, you know, new Jack Thriller City. My boy, Biz Just Chill in the building, man. Biz That's Just Chill, what's Biz up, just what? Chill, man. Hello, hello, hello. Come on, man. That's what's up now. It's a party. Yeah, appreciate you having me on here, sir. Yeah. Man, dog, hey, 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 I wouldn't have it any other way. Man, so to me, yo, uh, let's go. Need you put put me down, dog. Yes, sir. How does this even begin? Because you go back to it, eight ball MJG. Ooh, uh, no problem. Appreciate it, bro. You know, you you go back to you know all the comedians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They know you as P. Nice. <laughs> you done reinvented yourself seven seven times. Yeah, that's part. You know of what it. I'm saying, dog? Take take me back for those who think they know but don't know nothing at all. Well, I, I always wanted to be a rapper. And so, uh, you know, originally from Virginia, I was an army brat, so I always moved around a lot. And I was the kid that had, I had to learn how to make friends real quick. Okay. Because we always moved around as kids. And so, you know, I, I had this dream and this love for music, and I wanted to be, you know, the biggest rapper in the world, like, you know, just about every nigga in the hood. Of course. And so, uh, you know, in, in my pursuit of that dream... I picked up a lot of skills and a lot of things on the way. You know what I'm saying? My videographer didn't want to give me my music video back, so I taught myself how to shoot music videos and edit content. Or, you know, the radio station didn't want to play my song, so I had to get a radio show so I could play my song hour on the hour. And the club didn't want to let me perform, so I was like, well, I'm going to throw my own party and perform my own stuff. So, you know, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, everything that I've done in my career is because somebody else let me down. Mm. It's because somebody else didn't show up to work. And so when they didn't show up to work, instead of getting mad and, and posting a, a sensitive Facebook status or, or, or tweet, I just learned your job, so I don't need you no more. Yes, sir. No, get, come on. That's real. Push a button for that, man. Push a button for that. Yo, yo, you know what time it is. That's right. Jack Beauty of the Week, man. Hosted by Gigi McGuire. Show me the honeys. That's right. Who's coming with me? Gigi, let's get it. It's me, your girl Gigi McGuire, Miss Show Me The Money. And we are here with Shaz The Model. My name is Shaz The but I go by Shaz The Model. Come on, Shaz The Model. Ow. I'm giving tour drink of water. Actually, it's giving tour drink of hot chocolate, okay? Because it's cold outside and this thing is looking real sweet, honey. I take a sip. Here you Ow. Um, So how old are you? I'm 29 years old. 29. Oh, oh what's your sign? I'm a big Capricorn. Hey. Big Capricorn. Oh. Yep. Yes, I'm here for it. How tall she is? I'm 5'10". Okay, model. Stallion. Model. Let's Stallion, go. if you will. Come on now. So, um, what's your hometown? Where are you from? 
Uh, so I was born here in Marietta, Georgia, but I was raised in Louisiana. So, I mean, that's home for me. Okay. But this is my second home. I've been here for about 11 years now. I love Louisiana. I buy the hot sauce all the time. You got to. Best food. The best food. I actually just came from Louisiana and you want to know the reason why I went? Yes. To eat. Wow. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You got to go to Louisiana to eat. I went to New Orleans for two days and my sole purpose was to eat. Mm. Any daiquiris? I did not do any daiquiris. Yeah, I stay away from the sugar-filled alcohol drinks, you know. (laughs) Okay. That's how I I maintain my... uh, Youthfulness. Mm. It's okay. We're here for it. So, what? Um, what is your sexual interest? Are we strictly dickly? Are we a little gay sometimes on the weekends? Sexual. We're bisexual. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, like Pretty girls. Ba- baby. Um, what is your thoughts on 50-50 relationships? Okay, so I'm that girl that likes my man to be a provider. So I think 50-50 are for roommates. So unless you want to be a roommate, you got to be a provider. Uh, can if you room- want to be head of my household, you got to be a provider. Can, 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 can roommates get some pussy, though? Yeah. He said all or nothing. I, I don't room with grown men. Like You got to be a provider if you want to stay with me. Like, if uh, we living together. What if I don't want to stay? What I just need to come go? I mean, you got to provide something for People me. come and go and spend the night at hotels. They pay for that. Gotcha. Okay, it, I see what you did. It, it I see all what comes you did. along with something. There so you got to make that investment in me. Period. Okay. Yeah, we don't do fifty-fifty. I see what you did. Nah. And yeah. um, we'll talk are about faking it. an orgasm. No, because if you do that, you are stroking somebody's ego. You're giving them a false sense of thinking he that dude. You just gotta be like, you know what? I'm done. So you've never faked an orgasm. No, usually if I'm not, if I don't get mine, we just done. Like I'm I'm cool with just like nah, I'm gonna just roll over. Okay. I'm good. And are you giving him a second chance? Is there a redemption? happening it for depends. him to it depends on how much himself. i like you if i like you then yes you can redeem yourself okay because you know players fuck up too yeah you can't exactly. have a good day every day exactly exactly okay. but i gotta really like you for you to be able to redeem yourself okay yeah. i'm here for that i'll give you a second chance maybe maybe yeah. so where can the people find you uh, you can find me on the gram uh tiktok at shaz the model that's s-h-a-z-t-h-e model shaz the model um, I also want to shout out Betty Carson's, my girl Nikki, for getting us on this gig today. Yeah. And shout out to Gigi. Shout out to Jack. I appreciate y'all so much we for this opportunity. You. We love you, we Stallion. Love you. Bro, you done built an empire. An uh, empire, too. I mean, everybody know your name. Everybody fucking with you, man. You know what I'm saying? You got a real tight relationship with Boozy on yes, first name. Basically, you got, you got the goddamn gate, gate, gate uh, opener up on the thing. <laughs> Boo, my boy, man. You throw parties at his house. Hey, man, you know, we just actually uh, was just over at Boo's house uh, for his- uh, For karaoke. For, yeah, for karaoke in his birthday. Shout out, Boozy. Who Shout out, Boozy. Who Boozy do karaoke at this house? Can you imagine that? <laughs> I wish I would go. Over. I, I can't even imagine him singing "I Will Always Love You." Yeah, he, <laughs> he sung Jodeci. He came out, yeah, he came out there doing Jodeci. He sung Jodeci. He yeah, went he all in. He was yeah, dressed Jodeci. up. He had the costume. Yeah. He went. I seen that. He, he, he was like, he went all in, brother. Yeah. Salute the boots. Appreciate you having us out there. That's what's up, man. And then he cussed me out because he said I ain't been bringing him enough money lately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Boosie yeah. love his money, bro. Yeah, he do. You, yeah, he you do. better have that money with Boo. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Yeah, how did you even force the uh, relationship, man? Man, just, just you, 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 relationships is your forte. Just good business, you know mm. what I'm saying? Uh, being a man of your word, doing what you say you're gonna do. Mm. I'm not gonna hit nobody line unless I got some value. Mm. I'm definitely not a person that's gonna, you know, try to take from a situation. Any room I walk into, I want to make sure that I'm an asset, not a liability. Mm. So whenever I walk into some place, in some space, I always try to look at what's missing and how I can fill in the gap, how I can fill in the white space. That's right. And so in Boosie's situation, uh, you know, he had some artists that wanted to move around. And, you know, I had been doing tours, you know, my whole career. And so I was like, well, man, you know, I'll take your artists on tour, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully, you know, whatever whatever artist I find that I feel is worthy of that badass stamp, you know, I'll bring them back to you, man. And we've been we've been having a, a dope business relationship for, for quite some time, man. Out of the six guys I brought him, he's offered four of them situations. So 
you know, Boosie's always definitely looking out for the independence, and you know, it's it's a match made in heaven. It's a definitely a good good business relationship because you know I go find the talent, and Boosie love the talent that I find. Mm, mm. So yeah, man, shouts out Boo, man, shouts out Boo. That's my boy. Y'all know what time it is, baby. New Jack Thriller City, booty call. You know, when the ladies is taking you out and they have no intentions, again, you none and whatnot, that's what you call a booty call. And today, bringing our meal, we brought the homeboy right on back, Chef Torres, booty call, hosted by Gigi McGuire. Gigi, man, show me the money. It's your girl, Gigi McGuire, Miss Show Me The Money. And we have here for this booty call with Chef Torres, say this amazing dish that it smells so good i just want to like wanna lick look. it which oh sh okay well let me tell you what it's called oh. jerk chicken jerk egg roll. Okay. <laughs> new and it's improved. The jerk chicken for you new and improved so this is giving to me this is giving teas right so on this foodie call i am not of course going to give him any but i'm going to tease him with a little foreplay right um, the sauce looks very lickable. The 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 even though it's chopped in half, the egg roll itself is very much giving you know that shape that we all know with you know. It's it. enough. It's enough shaft on that egg roll. Not really, but you know if we line them up together, we can make it work. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But the sauce and and the smell and everything is very um, let's say it's yeah it's very tantalizing. Now he ain't gonna hit it. But I'm going to make him think that he about to with yeah, this somewhere. one. And, and if it tastes as good as it looks, he might even actually get a jerk. You know? Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I just need to taste it. Yeah. I want this one. All right. Go on now. Chef Torres, what is that? What's in, what's in it? Like she said, you got some nice lickable sauces in there. You got some delectable, juicy jerk chicken, sauteed onions, sauteed bell peppers. And all the right cheeses to bring all the smokiness and flavor together. All right, that's what's up, man. It's hey, yo, flavors I, for me. I'm turning, I'm turned on and turned off at the same time, Chef Torres. <laughs> Don't do that no more, man. All right. Uh, man. Now listen, if y'all know, like I know, and y'all can see how much I'm enjoying this, y'all gonna want to get on this man's top ASAP. Okay, so let the people know where they can find you. <laughs> Hop right on it. On Instagram, by all means, oh. at Chef Torres, T E R E S, not with a Z. Chef sure is you gonna catch a charge. This is Foodie Call. We'll see you next time with Gigi McGuire. Hey, um, that, that, t talk to me about your your, your co-host and everything, man. How do you guys meet each other in oh, Yeah. Because y'all uh, chemistry is like no other Batman yeah, man, Robin. We, we we met each other in the shootout, man. Got them, you know what I'm saying? He got the buck and I That's when you know it's real. That's when you know it's real. But I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, nah, nah, man. He um mm. man, being started out just just being, you know how some people come into a room, right? Yeah, and they always want to get something from somebody. You know, yeah. they always want to take from the energy. They want to take from the room. Biz was not that kind of person. Okay. Any situation he came into, he wanted to give. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that's what when I was building, you know, my shows and my platform and my studio. You know, that's what I look for. I'm looking for somebody, man. What kind of value are you gonna bring into this situation? I know what value I have. But what can you bring to it? And Biz was the type of brother that was just going, you know, kind of like like mine, as you know, thinking like he was like, you know, how can I, you know, be a, a service or be of be of an asset? And so, you know, when we started, we started, you know, doing the media and the, and the podcasting and stuff. And I had an open. I was like, well, shoot, man, you know, bro, been solid because I could teach a, I could teach a, a a good nigga how to be a podcast host. What I can't teach is a good podcast host how to be a good nigga. Nigga, yeah. Mm. Your mama had to teach you that. Yeah. Right? He so can do this all day. Come on, man. So if you solid, I can teach you a job. I can teach you a skill. I can teach, I can teach a man how to hold a camera. I can teach a man how to talk that talk. You know what I'm saying? But are you solid? Are you a good person? Do I have to watch my back when I'm around you? And Biz one of them people where I ain't got to watch my back. He going to watch it for me. That's how he got on. He's a super accommodating That's man. Safe. The way the way the, uh, we got five star treatment at your uh, of, uh, facility and your show last night. Everybody was so cool, so That's nice, safe. man. Yo, this completely uh, amazing environment. Yo, your biz. What made you want to be a part of this uh, uh, ugly money program? Um, honestly, I didn't. I didn't really plan to even do any of this podcasting. It was just more like. We chopped it up like, hey, what you think about doing a podcast? And it was like, all right, bet let's, you know what I mean? So it, long story short, it was a simple conversation. It was like, let's try something. We tried it, and 
You know what I mean? It was a good vibe, so we just kept going with it. You know what I mean? So I, I don't have no big, great plan of how it happened. It just <laughs> kind of organically just okay, like yeah, we sure. did it. I don't know. Biz, when, when when did you first realize, hey, this shit hot? We on, nigga. Uh, <laughs> what, what was that moment where you like, man, this shit, yeah, yeah, hold on. Everywhere hey, I know, hey, niggas hey, got you know there. what? You know what? I ain't going to lie. The first, the first time we did a million views, I don't remember if it was TikTok or Instagram or one of them. That's when I started looking. I'm like, damn, I think, you know, we might we might got something for real, for real. You know, so I ain't taking nothing serious or pretending we just having fun. But yeah, when the I girl seen said, a million yeah, views. Yeah, the girl said that she wouldn't date a guy that worked at McDonald's. Right, yeah, right. we fired her ass up. Fired her up, and it, <laughs> and it, went, and it went viral. As a matter of fact, it was TikTok. Yeah. It was TikTok. And when I seen that, you know what I mean, I was like, damn, a million views, you know what I'm saying, on, on the clip on the show. So that right there kind of made me feel like, yeah, let's, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to take it serious because it's really doing something. I seen Ho Corey Hokum uh, talking about y'all yeah. making references and stuff, man. Oh, and I was man. like, Shout God damn, Corey this bitch home, man. Yeah, Shout man. out to Corey Hokum. Hey, when I saw that, somebody had sent it to me like, man, Corey Hokum, Corey Hokum over there, um, he talk about you on the show. And I was like, yeah. And I said his impersonation of me was so accurate. He was like, man, it's a big dude, man. And he be killing them hoes. He hit that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Corey. You know, it's just dope to have... People that I respect, you know what I'm saying, uh, respect my work. You know what I mean? It, it it never gets old to see people that you admire, you respect, you've looked up to, to actually, you know, actually appreciate what you're putting out. So, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's, it's moments like that that keep, help keep you going. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, Jack Thriller fuck with my shit, bro. And I remember when Jack Thriller on This Is 50, bro. Yeah. yeah. Jack Thriller fuck with my stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a blessing when anybody that, uh you know, just really rocks with what we got going on. So. Bro, every time I get in your presence, man, or um, I'm I'm impressed, like thoroughly. Um, when I first moved back here, you had the the I think it was the Ugly Money Fest, yeah, or Ugly something. Money Music Summit, yes sir, yeah, the summit, yes sir. You got your own fucking summit, yeah, <laughs> like like goddamn the Re Revolt Summit or some shit, yes sir. You you took over the atrium parking lot, <laughs> man. It was a bubble up in that motherfucker, like a goddamn tent and shit, and yeah. people signing up yes, and sir. goddamn. Uh, uh, paying money hand over fist. I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. No money. I ain't making no money. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, there no was money. people in there that was trying to get down with this yes, program. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and it was sure. so many different, um, so many different activities to do and to be a part of for independent artists, man. Uh, you, the, 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 so many different, um, uh, 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 got seminars. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, uh guest yeah, speakers yeah, and everything. Got to learn the game they playing. You know, a lot of, a lot of, you see. A lot, of, a lot of rappers just want to rap. They want to go in the studio. They want to stay in the studio all day and make a new song. They got a thousand songs, but ain't no, peer, no nobody heard it. Yeah. But, bro, like, you know, you got to understand the game that you're playing. Like, if LeBron James, bro, can jump like a, you know, jump like a kangaroo and run like a deer. But mm -hmm. if he don't know the rules and the rules of basketball, he's not going to get past half court. Yeah. <laughs> Double dribble. <laughs> Yeah. Traveling, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You gotta know the rules of the game you're playing, mm -hmm. and so you know with the Ugly Money Music Summit, I wanted to teach artists, hey, bro, this is how you win, and 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 actually bring in the people that's winning. Mm -hmm. And so you know, um, you know, we we we're on our seventh summer. We've been doing it for four years straight, and uh, you know, it's resulted in at least seven or eight deals being being signed. You know, I'm extremely, you know, extremely, I'm extremely proud of that. The hey. fact that I get one of these young brothers out out the streets that might have made a different choice, bro. Facts, big facts. What are some of the artists that uh, you had seen or helped come out your summit that you helped put on? Man, I mean, you know, it's a crazy, crazy story. Um, so, it's an artist. I, I know y'all know Fujiano. Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Fujiano used to come to my um, my shows. And it, it's an interesting story because I remember the first time he came, he lost like hell. He lost. And, you know, he ain't, he, ain't, he ain't hold his head. He ain't had no problem, no issue. He just went back to work. And I remember a year later, I was judging another show that he was performing at and I ended up picking him and he turns around, signs the deal, gets signed to Gucci and so on and so forth. So it's just, it just goes to show like how dope, you know, a, a guy can be a little artist one day, but be a big artist the next day. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, man, that's, that's why, that's why I always try to treat the independence like majors because at, you just one song away. You just one piece of content away from being the next big thing. So, you know, I was always the guy that I felt like people picked me last for the team. I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to be the guy that's picking you last for the team. I want to be, when you say my name, like, man, Ugly Money Nietzsche, 
gave me a shot. Ugly Money Nietzsche was actually, you know, in, you know, instrumental in in my growth and my progress. So, you know, we've had a lot of people that have gone to success. Uh, Sleazy World Go, yeah, used to be on my reviews. Uh, you know, he was on the Double X uh, Double XL Freshman cover. Uh, Bree Triller recently had a big song. She, used, I'm the one that told her that the Shout record was Bree. a hit. Shout you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, when you see these artists that are that are trying to figure it out, and if you can be a part. Of their story of success, you know, it's always it's a humbling experience, man, to see them see them go up, go on and thrive. So yeah, salute to all of them, man. It's a it's a ton of them, man. It's a ton of them. Do you sure. feel like that's your talent? Like you just have an ear to know, like what's like gonna be good, like what's up next, or do you feel like you just try to give people a chance? I think I think I'm I think some of my talent is being able to provide a platform for talent to shine. You know, I'm I'm gonna just set the stage. It's on. You know, once you get on that stage, you, you take over. Um, you know, I can't make you hot. I can't make you, I can't make people like you, but what I can do is give you an opportunity when that light shines on you for you to turn up and make these folks and turn these folks into believers. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that, you know, we try to do, you know, every day at ugly money, you know what I'm saying? On the artist thing, cause we got different departments, but on our artist development part, decide, you know, we just want to give the artists a chance and an opportunity to make that to make that next step. You know what I'm saying? Now, what you do with it is on you. Yeah. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Some people will take the opportunity and run with it and go. Mm -hmm. And some people will take the opportunity and sit there in the same spot and they'll be there the same year. I, and, and I can't do nothing about that. But, hey, man, when I say I'm taking you to Boosie, I'm going to take you to Boosie. And you gonna, we going to sit there for some hours. And he going to play your songs. and He going to listen to you. And if he like it, he may offer you something. Mm -hmm. I took an artist to money bag, yo, same situation. Uh it, and you can't really, that's hard to do to get these people's attention to the point of listening to new talent or undiscovered talent, you know, um, and that comes with relationships. You know, you can't pay for that. You can't pay money back, yo, to listen to this nigga music. No, you got to have a relationship. They got it's got to be something that you know me and Bag got to be locked in in a certain in, in, you know in, in a certain in a certain respect level for what, what, what each of us does. So you know, um, yeah, man, you know, as long as I'm able to. I will always try to open doors for the underdog because I believe I was an underdog myself. Yo, yo, you know what time it is. That's right. Jack Beauty of the Week, man. Hosted by Gigi Maguire. Show me the honeys. That's right. Who's coming with me? Gigi, let's get it. It's your girl, Gigi Maguire, Miss Show Me The Money. And we are here with this Jack Beauty of the Week. Honey, what's your name? Svetlana Saleh. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Say that again. Svetlana Svetlana? I, I thought it was in French. <laughs> it's, no. some, it's some kind of language you have in here. It's Russian. I am not Russian. <laughs> you don't look Russian. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but you have a Russian name. Girl, my parents was watching the Russian Olympics. Oh, wow. True. That's okay. but interesting. My dad is Saudi Arabian and Eritrean. And my mom's Nicaraguan. Okay. It's giving international... It's giving United Nations. It's giving passport boys. <laughs> it's giving hella flags, and I'm here for it. No red ones, okay? Period. All right. <laughs> so, um, how old are you? I'm 24. 24. And Ow. what might be your zodiac sign? I'm a Leo. Come on, Leo. Leo gang. I'm, I'm, a I'm actually a Gemini. Oh, okay. Mm, but okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and give you the pass. because I'm a May Gemini. We the good ones. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and what's your hometown? Miss Jacksonville. United Nations. <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. Duval. Duval. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Murder laugh. Okay, we're going to get a little bit spicy for you, girl. You okay, ready? Okay, I'm ready, girl. <laughs> okay. So what is your sexual interest? Are you straight? I'm straight, yeah. Gay, curious? No, I'm straight as fuck. Straight, straight AF. Yeah. Straight, as like, fuck. six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what are your thoughts on a 50-50 relationship? Are you splitting the rent and the bills with Bay? Mm. Honestly, I've all, I moved out when I was 16, so I've always been super like independent. <laughs> Honestly, I don't give a fuck because a nigga's not ever gonna be able to take nothing from me. So I like to be able to say that I can secure my own house. Like a nigga can't feel like he could kick me out or can feel like he could take something from me. So yeah, the like, answer is no. I mean, I'm not tripping. It is what it is. I'm not like, I don't really have, I guess, an opinion on that because like I said, I've always provided for myself and I've always been able to. So okay. it's like, if a nigga got it and he wants to share it, that's cool. But no, I, know I don't. I got myself. I got don't it. pay your bills, girl. Pay your own bills. <laughs> I don't want to do it. And um, but don't get it twisted. I'm not fucking with no bum ass nigga. Damn, I'm okay. just not requiring. I don't listen. I mean, I don't know. See, because that's that's a loaded question. No scrubs. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, what? How often would you fake an orgasm, or do you fake orgasms? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We're not faking it? No, we're not doing that. Have mm -mm. you ever faked it? 
Girl, maybe like with my first boyfriend because I felt bad. I think he just didn't know what he Aww. was doing. And I think it was like really just kind of to make sure that he didn't like with his ego. I don't want okay. to fuck up his ego, you know, but I was, I was young and I don't do that no more because if you just don't got it, you just don't got it. So at the end when he said, baby, how many times did you come? You're saying I'm zero. T- I'm just going to act not. like I've been asleep the whole time. He, he, I might not even respond. <laughs> I already fell asleep. That's illegal. <laughs> okay. And where can the people find you, honey? Um, Unana Tattoo. O-O-U-U-N-A-N-A Tattoo on Instagram. That's Lana. I'm a tattoo artist. And right now, I'm actually doing... Um, I'm competing to be on Ink Magazine. So I got a little special going on on my page. Come get a little oh, tattoo. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm coming, girl. Vote for me. If y'all vote for me. You can come get a little $25 tattoo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's Jack's Beauty of the Week. <laughs> What other services uh, do Ugly Money offer uh, currently? Oh, man. I mean, management. We got management packages. Of course, media. You know what I'm saying? YouTube promotion. You know, I kind of figured out this YouTube thing. My my YouTube went from 5,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers in three months. So, figured that out. So, you know, when guys want to make their YouTube go up and everything, kind of got that. So, you know, marketing, media, everything that's around the entertainment industry and trying to Move up to the next level. We got our hands in in some shape, form, or fashion. Whether it's you know playlisting, whether it's shows. We do we do two tours a year. We tour over thirty cities mm-hmm. on two tours a year. So you know we do two summits and two tours. So whatever they want, if they want a tour, I call it rapper dope, Jack. Anything a rapper need, I got it. It's a rapper dope. I got all the rapper dope. Any rapper dope, any kind of rapper dope. They want shows. Tours, interviews, features, whatever, studio time, uh, perform. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a. I got the Adderalls, the Percocets, the Mollys, everything. <laughs> everything a rapper need. I got it. Is it not, just not for- the Mollys though? <laughs> Is it just for rappers though? Because I, I, you know, you got the podcast. Do you do it for like people that's just trying to get into like. You know, that kind of status, period. Like, people doing podcasts. Her money okay. got a podcast. So she's trying to figure out how to get it popped off. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see my she's way in. She's in the future. She's in 2024. Yeah. So, uh, it's interesting that you say that. We're actually launching Podcast U in 2024. The same things that we were able to do for independent artists, we're going to do for media uh, personalities, podcasters, and content creators. Because this space is still growing, and there really isn't a lot of blueprint. We really just be shooting in the dark with these things, you know what I'm saying? And it's always dope to have somebody to kind of lead your way, like, oh, I kind of blaze this path, you know? You don't got to go exactly my way, but I'm going to tell you what worked for me and what didn't. So, you know, in 2024, that's one of the biggest, one of our biggest, um, you know, just things that we're working on is, is, is podcast you, where we're actually helping people uh, produce their podcasts, we're giving people game on how to monetize their podcast, how to get some money out here, how to get some sponsors out here, how to get them views up, how to get those numbers up. Because, you know, when we crack that mic, that's the fun part. Then the work happens. It's like, oh, man, we spent three hours on this show and then nobody watch it. Yeah. And I've been there. You know, yeah. my first podcast did 52 views. It was in my living room. Me and such and such was, it was two iPhones and a GoPro. You know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> yeah, it was some, some hood shit. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, and it did 52 views. And, of course, you know, your first episode, you're thinking, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit a million. I'm going to be viral. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. <laughs> I usually don't do that. Right. But, um, you know, it took me four years just to get to the point of being able to, three to four years to get to the point of just monetizing mine. Mm-hmm. And so if I can show, if I can tell somebody in 30 minutes what took me three years, then why not share that, share that knowledge? And so, yeah, 2024, we are really stepping into that educational side of the space of, you know, content creation, media, podcast, you definitely. One hundred percent, bro. Now let's go. Let's talk about his name because I'm 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 curious <laughs> about Ugly Money. What 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 is Ugly Money? It's a process. Or, or why not Pretty Money? Nah, man. Nah, and man. why not Gorgeous Money? Gorgeous Money. <laughs> pretty Money. Podcast. Why not Handsome Money? <laughs> Beautiful uh, Money. Yeah, Pretty Money podcast every Saturday. Ugly, ugly, ugly money is the process of success because it's ugly. It's it's the ups, the downs, the highs, and the lows. Everything between your first dollar. And your first million, that's ugly money. Right. And I feel that, you know, them fives, them tens. Because before you get them hundreds and them thousands and the millions, first you got to find out how to make a dollar. And so my career was full of ups and downs, 
highs and lows, stopping, falling down, getting back up, brushing the dirt off my, my you know, and, and getting, you know, and continuing on. And so that's why I kind of came with the ugly money moniker because of the fact that that's that's really how my career had been. Really? You know, I'm, I was rebranding from my rap name to another, you know, to another another name. And, uh, you know, I, I felt that my career has been a roller coaster ride up, down, down. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of people don't see what's behind success or where a person had to get, go through to get to success. They think it's overnight. No, you heard about it overnight. Brother had been in the, been in the trenches for four, five years, you know, trying to figure it out. But then, you know, by the time he got that light shine and that opportunity came, he was he was ready for it. And that's the situation with me. You know, I've been in podcast darkness mm -hmm. for three years mm -hmm. on nobody really watching it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when um, I had an opportunity to get a light shine on me, I was ready to go. And I hit the gas and I ain't look back. Mm -hmm. Respect. 100 percent, man. Yo, uh, so do you ever you get so much music thrown at you all day? Mm -hmm. Do you get tired <laughs> of listening to music or? Uh, is it like, um, you know what? I, I got a good attitude every time you, and you can't wait to hear what the next song is. I, I, I wouldn't say I get tired of it because I love to do this. This is what I love to do. If I had a job, right? Okay. If I worked at the Waffle House. Don't blow no smoke up my ass nah, now. I'm, I'm dead ass serious. If All I worked right. at the Waffle House. Okay. <laughs> and I got off at 5 o'clock. Yeah. At 5.15, you know what I would do what with my time? Do Go with... do this shit I'm doing. Okay. And so, you know, I just believe that, you know, we should all... You know, make our jobs what we love to do anyway. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So when you really love what you do, it don't feel like work. I go to work and have fun, bro. I sit there and talk shit with my homeboys, mm -hmm. listen to hard ass records, and, and, and goddamn talk about the folks. You know, just basically have a barbershop conversation. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a, it's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get paid to have a good time. And so um, when it comes to the musical end, you know, do I get tired? Yeah, and sometimes when the music bad and that shit suck, you just you get tired of having to tell people something that somebody else should have told them. Like, bro, nobody told you that this record was terrible. Nobody right. told you that you could not rap on the beat. The fact that you can't even hear your vocals over your beat, nobody told you that. So I gotta be the first. So I gotta be the bad guy to tell you that this shit is dumpster juice. Um, so that that get tiring. But then the next record be hard. So you right back at it. So you know when I hear good music and I, you know, I and I, and I, and I come across artists that are hungry and are talented, you know that motivates me to keep going for sure. Mm. Got you, got you. Um, ugly money. What's the what's the what, what is a, a nice way to let somebody down and say, hey, this ain't for you. You you, I don't think you a rapper, my boy. That's not your calling. <laughs> um, you know, have I, you ever done that? Yeah, or? I, have, I have to all the time. <laughs> Uh, let's say Jack Thriller is trying to be a rapper. Yes. And it's terrible. Mm -hmm. And I say, and I'm listening to the song, and it's just, it just not going the way it's going. I, you know, I say, you know, brother, um, you know, everybody gets paid before the rapper does. The manager gets paid. The road manager gets paid. You know, every, the, the CEO. There's a ton of things that you can do in the music industry besides being an artist. The producer gets paid. The, the engineers. Everybody gets paid before the rapper is the last person to get paid. Why don't you go get paid first? And that's what I tell you. Go, pay, go get paid first, bro. Because, you know, you don't, you don't want to get paid last. And that's the nice way of telling you that your shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, man, go be a manager or something. Go be a CEO. Put your money behind somebody that got some talent. And, I, mm. and you know, I just encourage people, like, listen, <laughs> I'm not here to deter nobody's dreams because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, music is subjective or whatever. But, you know, if, if, if people aren't gravitating to it, this may not be your thing. Go try something else. You may be great. I was, that was me. I was a rapper. They gravitated to it. I got to the point where I got signed. But at the same time, it wasn't like, yeah, I want to play that new... No, it might. It wasn't what was for me. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I got there, put a mic on my hand and push a button, the whole world listened. Mm -hmm. Well, shit, nigga, all I had to do was take the beat off. God damn it, I'm still rapping. Right. But it's just a different word. So, you know, sometimes, you know, people just got to listen to what the universe is telling you, man. Some Your calling and your passion may be different things. Right. You know, we ha I had a, we have a passion. I had a passion to be a rapper. But my calling was to talk to people. My calling was to talk to the masses. Because when I open my mouth up, for some reason, they listen. I can't explain it. I don't know why. This ain't scripted. When I push that button or when I'm having this interview, I ain't really got no script in my head of what I'm going to say. Man, that's God talking. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so, but my passion was music. Well, 
how can I use my calling to help my passion? I think that's what people should start doing. Mm -hmm. Nietzsche, uh, what was your rap name? <laughs> P, P Nice. P Nice. So P -Nice. if we go to Apple Music or Spotify right now, search up P Nice, we're going to get some old. I pray not. Money I pray not. I pray, I pray I got it all deleted. You don't got nothing, you I ain't pray got not. nothing on nah, it? I, it's, it's a song with me and Young Dolph up there. Okay. Yeah, me and Young Dolph did a record called Roll On. Uh, Long Live Young Dolph. But uh, yeah, no, we hit, uh, we did a song because I was signed to Eight Ball and MJG. Yeah, so you know that Memphis connection was was always was always crazy with me. But um, no nah, man, you know, it, it, I feel like I retired from music. Right, I didn't quit because I had did one. I had some success. I got to the point where I got myself signed. I had got some paid shows. I had made some money. I just figured out it was my time to depart and do and try some other things. You know what I'm saying? And I felt that I would be better uh, I would be a better coach than continue to try to be a player. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm like I, I felt like Steve Kerr, where it's like Steve Kerr was a dope player, but that dude's one hell of a coach. Hell of yeah. a coach. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. He got the rings yeah. up. Yep. And yeah. so when I switched from being a player to a coach, I started, you know, I started uh I started seeing a lot more success primarily because of the fact that P. Nice, as an artist, was a selfish individual. A lot of artists have to be selfish. Play my music. Check me out. Share. Like it. Comment. You always need something as an artist. You want people to, as Nietzsche, how can I help you reach your dream? What can I do for you? How can I help your podcast go up? How can we make sure that your dance is the next TikTok craze? How can we make sure that we monetize New Jack Thriller, you know, New Jack Thriller City so we can, you know, hit, you know, two, three commas this year? And so Ugly Money is a, is a life of service where I actually am here to help other people. Mm. And when you provide services, of course, you know, income comes in. Hey, I wanted to ask you that too. So I know um, I be watching your uh, live reviews where, yes, man, you get dozens of people sending their shit in by the yes, minute. Yes, sir. Uh, and I know how much y'all charge too. <laughs> What's the most you ever made in a day off of your live reviews of just independent artists sending you your money? Ooh, man. Um, about half of what Jack make on this goddamn show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. About half of what Jack make, goddamn it. I make about half what Jack make. You know what I'm saying? We uh, I'm just trying to keep up with Jack, goddamn it. That's my answer. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> you see how the bird got my boy? You, you a bad motherfucker, nah. boy. You a bad motherfucker, man. Hey man, those um, I look forward to th those rants that you do yeah. and everything. And it seems like they always coming from, like you said, um a very personal situation when you talking about these artists and like the, when you was just t t talking about your plight yes, being an artist yes, and everything and you know with the complaining and all that other shit selling sob stories support me don't nobody support me and all this other yeah you gotta support yourself first you That's gotta right. get somebody something to support right, right. you know right. what I mean who wanna get in a car that can't work car ain't going car right. can't move ain't no engine in the car car ain't went, went, went nowhere who wanna jump in that car with you mm -hmm. nigga you ain't going nowhere then right. get that car moving Mm. Nigga want to catch a ride with you after that. You know what I'm saying? I think that sometimes it, it got to start with us. It got to right. start, you know, as an artist, you got you to gotta believe in you first. You got to double down on you. I mm -hmm. hear so many artists talk about, I need a manager and I need this. Boy, you ain't got, no, you need some fans, nigga. Yeah, you don't got nothing to manage. You need some fans. <laughs> Boy, you got you nothing need to manage. Yes. You need some fans. You need some people that's liking this shit before you got them go, you talking about you need people. No, you can handle your whole rap career by yourself <laughs> yes. right now because it ain't much of a career. Right? Yeah. And then yeah. when you get to the point where the calls and the inquiries are coming in so much that you can't handle it all yourself, then go get the, yeah, then you go get the manager or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I just think that a lot of times people, because because you just got to double down on you, bet on you. You never lose when you bet on you. All you got to do is believe in what you got going on, stand on it, and be consistent each and every day, living whatever your purpose is, and eventually you're going to end up somewhere. You never lose until you quit. So mm -hmm. just don't quit. Just keep going. You're going to you put one foot in front of the other. Now, you may not go exactly where you thought you would go, but you're going to get somewhere. Now, when I started this whole entertainment career, I thought I was going to be Hove 2.0. Mm -hmm. No, nigga, I'm more like Joe Budden 2.0. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so I didn't end up exactly where I thought I was going to end up, but I ended up somewhere. And, you know, it's a blessing. For sure. So when you tell your parents that you want to rap, what do they say to you? When I used to, when my daddy used to, my daddy used to hate my music. 
Uh, <laughs> I used to hate my music. You know, I, I, um, I actually just moved my dad down to Atlanta with me uh, two months ago. He's okay. down here in Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, I remember as kids, I would skip school to, you know, my dad would go to work and we act like we going to school. And as soon as he leave, we come back to the house and, and be recording. And of course, he come home on lunch and got down, cussed us all out. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't like it too much. But when he saw how passionate I was about it and I was not stopping, you know, after a year of your son just sweating in this room every day, making noise, uh, you know, as a father, you know, he 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 was uh, extremely supportive because at the end of the day, he bought me a computer to record that. They bought me a keyboard to make beats. So they must have they must have believed in me because I once I showed passion in it myself, they they definitely got behind me for sure. You had a, a good childhood, it sounds like. Yeah, man. I had good, I had you come from a great man. home. Yeah, I, I did. I definitely did. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't cap like the rest of these rappers on these interviews. At, at like, um, <laughs> come on, bro. Yeah. What they know, be I, saying, you, bro? Yeah, man, bro. You know, I came from the trenches. The lights was off, bro. Now nah, I ain't have all that going on, bro. You know what I mean? My dad was in the military. My mom, you know, what I'm saying was a silver Mary K cosmetics. She was us, and my daddy always had a hustle about him. So he was always doing odds and ends jobs. And, you know, daddy was just, every time he get off, right, like, daddy, what you got going on now? Oh, I'm about to take this trailer over here, take this car over here. Oh, I always wonder, like, daddy, what, what you got going on? Son, I'm hustling. You know, my daddy would sit there and stack his army check and then got to spend his hustle money. You know what I'm saying? So I think I got that hustle mentality, that entrepreneurial spirit from my father, for sure. When the last time you had a job? When I got out the army in 2010, February 10th, 2010 was the last time I had a. Your job a was the army. Job. Yeah, I was in the military. Okay. Yeah, I went to yeah. Iraq, deployed with the Second Infantry Division. That sucked, but you know, I told myself then. I said, "Man, God, if uh, I, had, I had a deal with God, I said, God, if you let me survive this war, I won't complain and I will go as hard as I can after my dream." And I never stopped after that. The man, I was supposed to die. How 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 did war ch change you? Cause my war. brother went to the same war. War is war. War is um, it sucks. You every day you got somebody trying to kill you. Um, and you know the thing about Iraq, cause I was in Iraq, it, it, what sucked about it was the day that I got there, they were shooting and killing. The day you day the one. day I left, they were shooting and killing. God damn. I'm like, well, what the hell? I've been here for a year, folks. A I'm talking year. about yeah, they they shooting and killing each other too. They yeah. not only just shooting and they shooting and killing us when we get in their way. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, what is we here for again? And then you hear, you know, conspiracy theories like, nah, we really here for about some oil or whatever. You know what I mean? And you know, not to get too political, but I will say that uh, freedom is not free. We are able to live in this country uh, as free men and women, but somebody paid the price. I, I've lost comrades. Uh, I've lost a lot of, of 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 fellow soldiers, you know, in that in that war, and, and you know, we should all definitely um, salute our service men and women because uh, freedom ain't free. We, we're able to keep these lights on and live free and walk around and, and you know and stay out past eleven o'clock because somebody over there popping popping off for us. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I may not be in agreement with a lot of the political people up top, but I'm definitely in, in full support of soldiers and troops. Mm -hmm. So was it your decision to go to the army or was it like your dad kind of wanted you to do it? Um, my daddy, see, I had a real daddy daddy, right? I had a daddy. James Evans. Yeah, yeah, I had a real daddy. My daddy told me, he say, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, my daddy told me, he said, hey, son, he said, you can go to college, you can go to the military, or you can go to jail, but you can get the hell out of here. You pick. But I tried college. I got kicked out of college. Say, well, you only got two choices. <laughs> I would be all that I could be. God damn, I, 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 I feel like going to jail. But when my dad, you know, you know, when my daddy was basically, but I, but I thank him for it today because it made me strong. It made me independent. It made me go figure out my own problems and issues or whatever. Because I think that all young men should go through a little something. You should. Yeah, we need to be a little tough. We need to be a little strong. That makes strong men. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You got to mm -hmm. let them fall on the, yeah, Brush, you know, get, mess your knee up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Fall down a couple times. You don't want to be no punk. You don't want to be no sissy. So my daddy straight up told me, like, hey, man, you got to figure something out. But you're going to get the hell on out of here. And, and really, that was his way of pushing me towards greatness. That was his way. I, I truly believe that I am the man I am today because of my father and the, and the values that he instilled in me. You know what I'm saying? And and I still, I still hold him to this day. So when, you know, he got to a point where he was getting older, 
and uh, he had a couple of strokes. You know, they was talking about maybe putting him in the home. I'm like, oh hell no, it's my turn. To, it's my turn to re return the favor. Get in there, nah, pop. Come on, you coming to the yeah. Get in there. Yeah, you gonna be on the podcast, fucking around with me. And so you know, <laughs> went up, went up to, flew up to Virginia. We sold the house. I packed him up, brought him back down here. He been living with me for the past two months, man. He loved it. He, he, you know, he always talking about getting some red bones and some Georgia peaches. He, he love, he love the show. Yeah, he love the show. Oh, so. oh you, you got them things oh, on there, man, bro. My daddy love the show. You yeah. hear me? Yeah. I had Joe Smith wife in there. I had Joe Smith what? wife in there. What yeah, you find? Man, listen, we had interviewed Joe Smith wife. Man, Joe Smith wife over there messing with my dad. I said, all right now, um. All right, ma'am, uh, goddamn, that, that, that ain't the nigga you want to play with, goddamn, because he got something for you. Holy <laughs> cow. That nigga got something for you. <laughs> Bro, where yeah. did you find her? Man, you know, she live in Atlanta. I, I, I know that. Man, she live in Atlanta, man. We, um, I saw her on one of my, um, shout out to my boy Purple Shell. I saw him on one of my partner shows, and I was like, okay. Bro, you got to connect me. I need to talk to her ASAP. And, you know, I had we had just talked about her on Trigger Alert. You know, I just pushed the button about yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah. And, um. Uh, so I reached out. We got in contact with her. She's like, yeah, I'd love to come on the show. Da, 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 da. You know, be nice to me, though. And I'm like, I was like, well, I said, so you want to come on the, the debate show? Because I was trying to get on Trigger Alert. She's like, no, we can do an interview. I'm like, okay. So when I did the interview, everybody was calling for blood. They wanted me to, they like, bro, push the button on the fire. I'm like, it's an interview. Yeah. My journalism, my, it's a, I'm supposed to ask questions. So I didn't get the chance to. To light up. I didn't get a chance to light up because it was an interview. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to make sure that I'm doing what I say I'm going to do. But, hey, but, but was, she did was, say was that you, she coming on Trigger Alert. Oh, that, oh that, okay. That button was itching. Yeah, it was itching, bro. That oh, trigger. no, no, no. When, if she ever comes on Trigger Alert, the button going to be goddamn up. Yeah, the button going to be ready. Got you. Wait, so, so what's Trigger Alert? That That's when you have your, like, woman-man debate? And... Yeah, we, we talk about relationships, life, love, and relationships. You know what I'm saying? You know, I would love to have your fine ass on them. Yeah, you should come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you need you know, you on the like show. You look like my second baby mama, the expensive one. Uh, uh, $2,500 a month. <laughs> <laughs> what a damn five-year-old need $2,500 a month for? Oh, yeah, yeah, we love to have you on though. I can, I can, I can. Oh, come on. We have a oh, great time. Shit. Okay. We have sure. a great time. <laughs> I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, good sir. Good times, man. That's yes, funny. Yes, sir. We have fun on that show, man. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you're going to have a really good time, man. The drinks is flowing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the music is nice. I'm, I'm going to just slip, wait for you to slip up and say something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that. No, but girls, no, you know what, though? I will say this. A lot of times the women have great points. And you know, I let them pop their shit. I'm like, hey, that's your truth, baby. Live it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just may disagree. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you know, when they, I, I, my show is not to. I don't bash women. I really, it's really more of a comedy. I don't. We don't bash women. We just hold women accountable for this for this shit. It's just like, hey, baby, um, you're not gonna sit here and tell me that Jada Pinkett Smith is not the Michael Jordan of toxic women. She is the most toxic. I mean, she is LeBron James of toxicity. Mm. The things that she done to Will Smith and the the the, the, the demasculinization and how she makes a public mockery of him is just an abomination of masculine energy. Mm. Mm. And so the girls might be like, "Well, you know, he did it." Nah, and you know, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, yeah. you know, I'm gonna just stand on. I'm, I, hey, man, I, I'm just pro. I'm just pro. I'm pro black man, but I'm also pro love. I'm also pro pro black couple. You know what I'm saying? I want more of us. To, I want more families. I want more two parent because I came from a two parent household, and I know how. How dope it is to be able to when mama tell you know when daddy tell you no to go ask mama, you know what I'm saying? Now everybody don't get to do that. I got to do that, and I know how it felt to be like my daddy. Hell no, don't do it, mama. I get the honey bun out the goddamn. Uh, can I get the honey bun out the cabinet? Go on, get it, son. Then I get it. He, my daddy, about oh, mama said I could have it. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> now that's their problem. I, I believe I, you know, I, I would love for more black brothers and brothers, you know what I'm saying, to be able to have that. And at the same time, black men in general, we need black men to raise us to become strong black men. Yeah. Right? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so uh that's what my show is really about. That's the bigger meaning of it, is the fact that man, let's put the black father back in the picture and let's not alienate him let's not water him down and let's not dilute him or, or you know disassociate him you know i understand queens that you can go get your money in 2023 black women are doing an amazing job an amazing job they are killing it but let's not forget tyrone you don't want to goddamn replace tyrone with your body mm -hmm. okay because a lot of times what what what, what, what I, I, the issue i have is these women will get 
certain ones will get Section 8, food stamps, WIC, Medicare, Medicaid, or whatever Medicaid. And they say, oh, I'm independent. I don't need no nigga. Yeah, you don't need no nigga because you got a white boyfriend named Joe Byron, the president. You are living off the government. So you were sitting there saying that you're independent, and now you want to sit there and shit on the black man because of the fact of the matter is that, you know, the man that gave you, gave you some free food. But Tyrone over here was offering the same house, the same protection, the provisions. He was paying the bills. He was bringing home the bacon. But if Tyrone asked you, I had a long day at work, baby. Can you know? Can you give me some peace and quiet? Oh, I ain't doing that. But goddamn it, them folk come in this motherfucker, make sure your 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 damn house clean or whatever. They are gonna kick your black ass out. Guess what you gonna do? You gonna get up and go clean the house. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I just want to get back to men and women, you know, loving each other, respecting each other, and just you know everybody playing their position so we can both succeed. One hundred percent, man. I appreciate that, my boy. Yes, sir. What do you think is the problem in the black households now? Why do you think we don't see two parent households in the black community anymore? Um, mama, um, mama went, she left, you know, mama went outside and got her some money. And when mama went and got her some money, she thought that she was daddy. And just because mama went and got her some money doesn't mean that daddy is not useful. You know, the fact that you got to understand nowadays, like, like, like a woman like yourself, you can easily say, you know what? I am going to go on this website with my phone, sign up for it, take myself, my camera phone or my cell phone out, record myself doing God knows what, and tell people it's $9.99 for you to come watch it. And you can make millions. It's going to be hard for me to compete with that. I, from in order, I had to make my first million. It took me 40 years to make my first million. The fact that you were born gorgeous, you can make a million in a year if you wanted to. You know what I'm saying? And so when women get to the point of, I, I love the fact that women are strong, that, they are, that they can provide for themselves. But you just don't, just because you can provide for yourself doesn't mean that this man holds less value. Just because you can make your money and be an adult and pay your bills does not mean that this man cannot bring a whole nother, you know, different type of lifestyle to you. And so, you know, it's just, you know, people get Hollywood when they get some money. And then the Internet, that's really what happened. Because mama and daddy used to have to work out their problems because mama, all the only men she saw was daddy and them niggas at work. Right? So that's her pool of people to choose from. Well, shit, he still ain't better than Tyrone. So I, you know, and so they work out their problems. Now, well, mama got an Instagram and she got 150,000 followers. That's 150,000 dicks that's in her message request and she can choose one. And as soon as Tyrone make her mad, guess what she gonna do? I don't gotta deal with this. I got a ton of niggas that I can go see. And what did she do? She throw that man away that she had that kid with and she leave him for whatever infraction that she feel that she left him for and she go get another nigga that's willing to lie to her. And she... Then the black family is broken up. Then the household is, 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 is you know, it, it, it's, it's split. It's separated. Yeah, social media really plays social media a is big that, part, yeah, bro, it's crazy. It really a, a negative effect. Because you can, you can literally go... You can go... You can go... You can go get attention from anyone. At any time, all you gotta do is post a picture, click a button, bloop. All right, I got five thousand niggas to choose from today. Which one I'm going at? Who who paying for my goddamn juice and crab? But you know, back in the day, goddamn, you know that, you know, all you had was your little work boo and goddamn Tyrone. And so you know, I just think that social media just gives uh, certain women a, a false sense of availability as a man. Because baby, any man, any woman can get some dick, but are you gonna get a man that's gonna protect you, provide you for you? Uh, build with you, grow with you, invest with you, you know what I'm saying, raise them kids with you. Huh? No, a nigga gonna come for that pussy. But is he gonna stay for that family? And a lot of a lot of these women misconstrue the guy that's coming for pussy for the man that's staying for the family. Facts. I want us to get back to the, the man that's staying for family, get that nigga the pussy. If I'm over here throwing throwing the football outside with your son and know he can't catch, and I'm still throwing that motherfucker to him, give me some pussy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is, he, he just over here for the ride, baby. I'm over here for the long haul. And I think that sometimes uh, we are too quick to just quit on each other because we all feel that we got so many options because of this app on this phone. 
when we could have really worked that out. That's all I'm saying. You think uh, women give up on men more or men give up on a woman more? Well, 80% of divorces are filed by women. And we ain't leaving these women. They leaving our asses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but that's only because that's a, that's we, were we were talking about this before. No, we were talking about this before. Men are less confrontational. Men are not. There can be a problem in a relationship, and a man is not going to be the one to communicate that first and be like, hey, we got a problem. Let's fix it. The woman is the one doing that. And after you've done it about 10 times and a nigga ain't doing nothing, yeah, you're going to file for divorce. Men, very, they'll, they'll let shit go or... They'll stay in their marriage and just have a mistress or whatever. <laughs> Women are just going to file for divorce. They're like, okay, nigga, I'm leaving you. But a nigga will really stay in a relationship knowing that it, it ain't working out, but he just don't want to communicate. He don't want to fix shit. But then when she leave, he flabbergasted. What the fuck you expect? But we don't give up on you. Yeah, I, we don't I, give up on, you got to understand one thing. They man. give up in different ways, though. They might not give up in a way that they file for divorce, but they give up helping with the kids. They they want their woman to work. They give up paying all the bills. What, what, what you mean, a lot of things, you to work? There's a lot of reasons what, 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 that men... What you to work? There you go. Oh, That's what, what we were talking about last night. So let me ask you something. <laughs> <laughs> I like that drop. Listen, I might need a button real yeah, quick. that's a good drop. On the, one thing about it is that we, one thing we, about it we have we have to explain to women sometimes that you know what I'm saying your man should be a provider and and be able to protect and take care of you, but at the same time you're a grown adult. So certain responsibilities as far as bills, these are just adult things. So it's so many women that come on the show and get him uh, can screw like oh if he's not you know, taking care of all my bills and he really don't rock with me. Well, when in all actuality, as an adult, it's certain things you're just going to have to handle. You know what I'm saying? It's no way around being an adult, especially if you have kids. So, you know, feeling that just because a man won't financially, like you say, pay all the bills, like that don't mean he don't really rock with you. Well, then what's the point of a husband? Uh -oh. I feel like a husband, once y'all get in a, a, a marriage that things are more than likely going to fall on the husband. Yeah. But we're not married right now. So well, when you yeah, get to yeah. that level, then you can get wife privileges. But I just met you last week at, what you call it? No, I say so that I all the know. time. You can't know. expect wife privileges from girlfriends, and you can't expect husband from a boyfriend. So Facts. ain't no paying your bills, and ain't no Facts. I'm having your kids. That is for marriage that's for specifically. That's my girl, my but wife, But that's what I'm my, saying. Like, yes. when you get married, yeah, the husband should be paying all the bills. Yeah, more than, more than likely that's how it's going Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, so, you know, it just be a lot of little ways that women just get fed up, but men just don't fall for divorce. They'll just stick with the shit. Well, well, well I mean, is that wrong? Is that wrong that I didn't give up on you? You got to understand one thing. The fact, if I, get to, if I get to the point of marrying you, because men, we love unconditionally. That's a fact. Yes. I could look, I would love you. Who said that? Who said that? We talked about this on your show, remember? For sure. I would love you. We love I would, unconditionally. I would love you if you worked at McDonald's. Facts. If you worked at Waffle House. Facts. If you worked at Checkers or Chips. I would love you the same way. You feel what I'm saying? I could be riding in the drive thru in my Bentley and your fine ass is in the damn drive thru and I'll pull you up out that drive thru and take you home with me. That's very you true. You know what I'm saying? There's a different. Okay. So when You're going to love a woman unconditionally regardless of money or her status because sure. that's not her position. Yeah, I don't but care what kind of followers she you got. Fat. I don't care what you got going on. If she's ugly and fat, though, that's not unconditional love. You're not going to choose a woman that's ugly and fat. She's ugly yes, and well, fat. Well, to you, I right? might find her attractive. Yeah, You're calling her ugly and fat. I'm looking at her. I'm like, damn, she look good right now. So she eat my booty right now. Lizzo can get it, bro. That's a personal What you talking about, well, I'm gonna step. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna step. Get in there. Lizzo got one time. Flat Oprah got one time for El Bro, I'm, I'm, and I meant Jack. You get a night with Oprah. Yeah. Are you pulling out? No, I ain't pulling out. Oh, no, now I'm on the hoes. Man. I be trying to tell you, bro. I be telling you, bro. Hey, brother, Oprah got one time, bro. One time. Come around here. Bro, I'm shooting up the I'm club. I'm nothing in you. What? I'm shooting up the club. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know yeah. what's yeah. Devin doing. I've been doing that for a few times. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what's Devin doing. Girl, when it's going down, your body like, oh. Glad you came. I'm trying to tell you, dog. You know what I'm saying? In the morning. Yeah. Is that true? No. We yeah. stick. We stick by. Okay. Man. I know a lot of we dudes that's with that girl we're, and they really got dope. fat. They still with them. Yeah, if I if I was with her, if I if I if if you, you will leave me because I fell off on some money. You know, I lose my job. You, a woman will leave me quicker than than I leave her because she got fat. For sure. And it's just the fact of the matter is, yeah, I do understand what you're saying as far as a woman being frustrated. But you don't think we frustrated too? 
You don't think we, we, we you, you think we like the fact that your ass be snoring and drooling on the that pillow? Shit nasty. You think we, we don't really like it. And listen, we don't like liver and onions. We just eat it because you keep on making that shit. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that, that we have that are frustrating too. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we know put that, up with it that and good we morning, bro. We, 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 we put up with it because we understand that I love this woman unconditionally. I actually love the human being that she is in her existence. And you know what? For me to walk, to go to this point of walking down this aisle and basically giving her half of everything, I am not just about to walk out on my on my my marriage just because I'm pissed off about something this month. Because we're gonna figure it out eventually. And I think a lot of times women just say, "Fuck this, I'm I'm dipping," and they think it's something better out there, and they find out it wrong. Ain't. They find out it ain't nothing better. They no. find out, you know what? I probably should have stayed with him because what's out here is a bunch of dick for me. But now you can't come a, back. A lot of fans. A bunch yeah, of now you can't come back. You need to stay where you are. Oh, yeah. You can't you know come what back I, I believe like I would say more than half, more than half women, and they're going to get mad at me about this. Your first baby daddy, probably the best man you're ever going to find, more than half. And the first husband is definitely the best man you probably ever had. Yeah. Why? Because that's when you're, that's, that's when you're at your most valuable. You're sexier. You ain't had no kids. That stomach on flat, flat. That booty on fat, fat. And that, that coochie got bigger. And that cootie. Huh. He, he did what? So, <laughs> they got so, bigger. so by the time you get to two, and, the other by hole. the time you get to two and three, it'll put a whole bunch of miles on it. Goddamn, yep. I mean, them extra, extra thirty to forty pounds. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Bags under your eyes from dealing with that stress and everything. So you know, a lot of times women just are so quick to just pull out of something when he's just, man, why don't you just try to stay down as long as you possibly can? Yeah, I, I believe, and and that's why I'm so. Cautious about getting in relationships because I am going to exhaust every resource and every aspect before I say quit. Because that way, when I finally walk out this door, I'll mm. be like, there ain't nothing that chick got that I ever want. Mm. I done tried therapy, we done went to couples counseling, we done prayed, the pastor done prayed, and every and God damn it, if this chick is still goddamn a demon, then God damn it, it ain't, we ain't the right for each other. So mm. when I walk away, and I cut them ties, I don't ever have to spend the block. No, I'm not about to stop by the club or whatever on some sneaky link. No, we can't go have tea or lunch in them. No, I'm going to move forward. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think women quit on us way quicker than we quit on y'all, unfortunately. Y'all some pussy ass yeah. hoes, man. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all, though. I agree. We definitely love y'all. Run out on the family. <laughs> because, Conscious you know, motherfucker. Because think about it. Like, What are the main reasons why, 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 why divorces happen? Money. Financial money. money or infidelity, transactional money. dating, right? money. transactional dating. That's the problem. Oh, so, a lot so, of that shit is con uh, connected to that. So if 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 me All and you, things in if, life are transactional though. Yeah. So but but if me and you get together, right? And and day and when we when we we're getting married, the day one, I have a job, I'm stable, right? And I'm paying my bills as a husband. What the hell was you doing with your money for them ten years we was married? Saving it. So how how the hell? After 10 years, if I get laid off of this job and shit get tough and shit get hard, now you're saying this ain't making no sense. What were you doing with your money over these 10 years when I've been paying these bills? You should have been opening businesses, doing, doing something. You should have something to show for the protections and provisions that I have allotted to you over these past 10 years where we should have some kind of cushioning to, 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 to soften this blow. And a lot of women didn't do that. No, your ass went on the girl's trip. You bought Chanel, got now me, you know what I'm saying? Because your money, your money now. And he, he going to pay all the bills. And now you ain't got nothing to fall back on. So when that man falls, oh, well, this ain't working because, you know, it's, I don't want to, I can struggle by myself. Yeah, but that's what I say. I never believed in that rainy day shit because <laughs> what, what makes the sense of if a woman was with you and she never provided for you or done anything for you financially, what's the sense of her waiting until you are broke, down at your last, have nothing going mm. on, now she's about to pop up and start mm. doing it. So I Isn't never point, I though? never understood that. You, you if To me, that rainy day shit is the most thing that annoys me the most on yeah, the show. Like as soon either. as I hear that rainy day shit, I'm triggered. I don't like like it because the concept make make no sense to me. But that's the point though, because the husband is gonna provide, and if the wife is wise with her money and she's stacking up for if something happens when you get laid off, she has the money. But most of the time, she just moves on to another provider. Facts. Yeah. She has enough money to move on to you know another. What she don't you know what they say? Yeah, but that's just I got my bag. own money. I don't need to deal with this shit. Yeah, yeah. you got your own money because you ain't had to pay no bills for the past yeah, decade. Because I've been slaving at the goddamn factory. Exactly. That's big, but this situation, though, we're talking about it like it's a normal situation. That's very rare. And in today's households with uh, married couples, the woman does work and pay bills. 
It's, it's very rare that a woman just never pays like a dime towards bills for 10 years. That's not our average situation. You don't think so? so? On, no, it, it, it's not. It's that show with like marriage, like the woman does work and she does pay bills. Yeah, it's one in 23 women are killing it. Yeah. But so I, that this is a very rare situation we're talking about. That doesn't just happen. I believe she should pay some bills, though. I don't think the brunt of it should be on her, but I love yeah. the, the fact Wi-Fi that bill. you, you know, whatever you want to pick. Yeah, <laughs> that that you see what I'm saying? I'll pay, I'll pay for the Netflix. But I do yeah. like, I do like you consistently, you know, taking care of something because it shows responsibility. Uh, it shows that you know how to manage a checkbook. Yeah. It shows you know how to like do something with Make your money. Construct- yeah, so it's like I want you to do something. You yeah. should know that before you marry her, though. I, me knowing that and you putting that into action and making that materialize within the moment is see because all of that sounds good when we talk about it but then when it's time for me to watch you really manage a checkbook and you just sitting here looking and you don't know what to do and you just have $1,500 hey where your money at what you uh, you got $13 in your account you don't know where your money went in it it's like god damn what that's are you doing you with the bread that's why you gotta learn based off actions I don't care what a nigga telling me if you ain't showing me then I ain't believing it and I gotta see stuff god, before damn. we get married Who hurt you gotta you? show me you better shut up. She okay. got to come on the show for sure. She got to come on the show. No, I'm just saying, like, sure. anybody, anybody could tell you anything. Like, somebody could be like, oh, yeah, I'm good with money. But then when, when you marry them, they got a 500 credit score and they in debt. So, you like, and you see red flags before they happen. You know, like, people act like they be. He lied because um, you wouldn't marry shots. him, though. If you would have told you he had a 500 credit score, you wouldn't have married him. So, he had to <laughs> But lie. a 500 credit you score, you know. But a 500 credit score isn't going to live well. He's not going to have a nice car. He's not going to be. You, there are things that are physical well, manifestations of how we some do people things. Oh. No, yeah, I but know somebody who had like an eight, don't happen overnight. That's, that's your lifestyle. And, uh, they end up going through a divorce, and now their credit is like goddamn a six twenty. <laughs> and they went from you know eight fifty to six twenty. But you know, hard, everybody goes through hard times eventually. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what do you have to show for this ten years of protections and provisions that I gave you? So when I fall, if you can't cushion my blow. Then what? The, what? What were you doing? It ain't got to be ten that years. It could be two years. Yeah. If it been two and years, been what there. you been like, doing like, for the last I, I couple been years? I've paying these bills. You been going to school or whatever? I've been paying these bills for the past two years. All right, cool. We switch. What yeah. we doing? <laughs> what we doing? If you don't, if you don't have anything to show for the fact that I've been paying and taking care yeah, of you man. and your kids and da 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 for for the past, then you know what? It, we we really gotta reconsider. We gotta reevaluate that's, some why, things. that's why I don't believe that a man should pay. Everything, Everything. I, I, I don't. That shit That's crazy. just me. I don't believe that. You know what? That's I don't true. think that's true. You know what, brother? That's true. You no, got that's a true. great, you got a great point, that's bro. That's, that's true, though. That ain't that's my true. situation. I don't know. It just depends on where you work. If y'all married and y'all got kids, then go ahead and make y'all separate money. But who watching the kids? That that's that's very I, much I work true. from home for the most part. Yeah. I don't. I don't care. We don't care. Yeah, we don't care about that. Do you? you yeah. Just like how she said that five hundred credit score, baby. Your credit score could be three hundred, and I'm gonna look at you and be like, bro, you seen bro, baby in the white pants? And I, oh, man, tell her come here. Yeah. We're not thinking about. It. I wonder where she works. I wonder what yeah, she drives. You don't care about I wonder money. what type of credit score she has. Well, uh, yeah, about, yeah, we don't, so we don't about. think about. I'm an Instagram follower. <laughs> yeah, we not. We that never, never crossed like my that. mind actually. Yeah, yeah well, that no. never. We, men don't think like that. We love literally unconditionally. We kind of off of a physical appearance initially, but that's what. We just we just take you as you come. Yeah, do and you we don't fuck look with deep. me? Do you yeah, fuck with me? Type yeah. shit. Yeah. Men will build a woman up, but a woman ain't building a man up. Facts. And that's a big. But that's just big life. Facts. That's just life. That There's nothing wrong with that. But that's just life. I agree. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Damn. Yeah. Because that's all you have to offer now. Right. If you don't get your fine ass the fuck out of here right now. And you know what on the I'm show? I think, I think women can help uh, mold a man to become a better version no, of himself. No, I'm not Jesus. I'm not your mama. I ain't building oh, you. I but I, I don't think that's their duty to do that. They do it, Only but that's Jesus not their duty. Only Jesus can build a man. Only Jesus or his daddy can build a man. It's a support system. Yeah, yeah I'm going to support you, but I ain't building you up. No, we don't need you to build us because as men, we know how to build ourselves. Exactly. But, you know, as a man, we go through a lot of things out here, especially black men, respectfully. You know yep. what I'm saying? 
what I'm saying? So having that that support system plays a big part in the success in our life because if we support it and, and around the right people in the right type of energy, we could do anything literally. Encouragement and support goes a long you know what way. I'm saying? But yeah. you know that's a that's a whole nother thing though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What what's the extent of your uh encouragement and support uh in money? Um where does it begin and what does it end? As a wife or as a girlfriend? <laughs> Practice like humor me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, for real, for real. As a wife, I would do, honestly, I I really believe that divorce only happens if he hit me or um, if he cheats. If whoa, it's any, whoa, if it's any, oh, if he cheats, if he cheats, I okay, agree with cheating. Okay, I, I might turn. But if he cheats, uh, yeah, okay. hold on, biz, I got it. Oh, yeah. ma'am, if, ma'am. if he has sex with somebody else, or if he hits me, then the, then the marriage is over. Okay, um, hitting, hitting you, I totally understand that, yeah, man. But I, cheating, I think, is the infidelity is the stupidest reason for a woman yeah. to walk out of a door. Okay, the you, dumbest. Uh, respectfully, ma'am, you are about to leave this man that you have a family with, children with, generational ties with, because he went and got some pussy for another man. That's going to do the same thing. All men don't cheat. Ma'am, I'm not say all men right. are going to cheat, but I'm going to say all men that you're going to want the tie, high value. Oh, yeah. you, 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 don't, you don't know the yeah. men that I want. Yeah, we know. We got a 500 credit score. We know you. We're going to keep it real, Jack. We know exactly what you have. Y'all brought me to here. We're going to keep it real. Ma'am, there is no way in hell. I I, I, see you. There is no way in hell you are about to deal and go and marry a financially a uh, hurt guy, unstable. a financially unstable man. It's not about to happen. I can tell you, you look expensive, okay? So the type of guys that you would even facilitate or you would even be attracted to are going to have to be a certain financial caliber, a high value man. Name me one rich man that you've ever met that don't cheat, that hasn't had a problem with uh, uh, monogamy. Can you name one? Can you name one millionaire? Do you Russell know one? Wilson. Who? Russell he cheated on he cheated on he cheated on his he cheated on his ex wife with Sierra. To get Don't with matter. Her. She was okay. Right. So next, exactly. So he cheated. He so you are basically walking away because I'm talking about the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the fact of the matter is what do these ain't kids, nobody finna cheat on no motherfucking Sierra shit. These kids need daddy. You are willing to walk away from that about some dick and pussy. He just stuck his dick in the Tiffany or whatever with a condom on. That's that's like going that's like that brother going to the gym after work. Well, you and I'm know not what saying it really it's okay, is. but is it worth walking? What, what really away? It's not you know worth it really is. It's, it's, it's not, it's not about the marriage. physical. Even though the physical act of sex is bad enough because now you put me in danger. But, 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 but it's, it's not it's not emotion it's emotional for it you it's not matter. emotional no for. I'm not even talking about emotional I want to go I'm play talking basketball. about the physical act of it so like that's dangerous enough because all the shit going around you bringing that back to me you could bring it like that's, that's just it wasn't dangerous hazard. on your hot girl summers I love I hate, I hate have when you women ever say that before, because man? it wasn't hold on man it I'm wasn't married, it so wasn't so dangerous it wasn't dangerous when y'all was having hot girl hot girl summers it wasn't dangerous before you met me when you were sleeping with this guy and that guy it wasn't dangerous then yes it was so it's only it's only hold on ma'am it's only dangerous when a man sleeps with a woman, but when a woman is well, out here, okay. goddamn, uh, hoeing and, and thotting and thotting or whatever, and having you know a hot girl summer, you know why it's different? You know why it's different? Because after I go and hoe and thot, I go get checked now, out. Now, now but if I'm not, with my husband and I'm not then. expecting anything different, I don't get checked out because I'm like, oh, my husband, we only having sex with each other. Well, I something don't get brought in his bedroom, it might have came from her, not him. Because she was the one that had a hot girl summer last year until she found me and I saved her. Now, but but now, but now it's dangerous because he wanna stop by Tiffany House. Me and Tiffany have a committed side bitch and nigga relationship. We are committed to each other on the side. You was fucking Tyrone, I'm not you. Um, Tyrone, Ty Ty, Lil Ron Ron, Jack, Lil Playboy, goddamn man the cameraman. But it's not dangerous. It's dangerous when I do it, but it's it's cool when you do it. It's a problem when I do but it. But even besides that point though. <laughs> It just shows lack of. It just shows you know your character. Like people character? that you know that get married Am and they cheat. You lack discipline. You you're not honest. It's not discipline when I'm paying all somebody? the bill. Wait, I have character, discipline, and all that because I'm paying all the bills. That shows my type of discipline you, and sir. dedication. Yeah, but and everything you also I, cheat. So I must no, know baby, how that's to. Your, I, biz, I got you. That is your ego, ma'am. No, that is your ego. That has your nav- ego cheating that is, has that, absolutely that, nothing to do with the person that gets that cheated on. It has to do ego. with the what? cheater. Ma'am, if I am protecting and providing and taking care of my kids. Those are two different hold things. Hold on, ma'am. I was talking or whatever. I don't want to oh, interrupt you on your show. I'm sorry. But <laughs> if I'm... <laughs> Your sound boy. <laughs> hey, T-Rex, if, if I'm protecting and providing and taking care of everything that That's I'm supposed son. to take care of as a man, right? T-Rex I'm paying the bills. Son. You're comfortable. I'm paying the bills. I'm taking care of the household. I'm a father to our kids. I'm inspirational to you. I pour into you the way I'm supposed to pour into you. What do you lose by me stopping by this young lady's house 
on Tuesday. If I don't bring you with no babies and I don't bring you no diseases home, what do you lose by me stopping by her house? Other than the fact that the matter is that I lost a nut and I came home extremely calm. You don't lose anything, ma'am. That's ego. Your ego is in it because you feel that like, I got the best pussy in the world and he should only have his pussy. But you know what? God might not have wired all men that way. I'm not saying that all men cheat, but I don't think I think that monogamy is taught. It is beat into men's head. We naturally want to flower seeds. We naturally want to spread it around. But some men have been taught that. So you're telling a man to go against what his natural nature is. Because of your ego? Well, well I think that's a dumb thing. reason to walk out your house. Everybody don't got to get married. True. Your and ego. if you choose to get married, you know what marriage is. And if you feel like, yeah, I don't have an enemy to stay with one woman, don't get married. Why? What, what, what about, what the, fa the fact of the matter is that a man has sex with another woman makes him a bad person. I didn't say... Man. It don't make him a bad person. It don't person. make him a bad make person. Bad it, it makes you, it it makes makes you not fit for marriage. So I'm going to exit the marriage. I'm a, I'm a protector and a provider. Let me tell you something about protectors okay, and providers. When a man credit card come out of his pocket, it did get hard. You know why? I could pay bills. I pay these bills. I paid this mortgage. You know what? I have the right to do what I please with it would then. The same way I pull out the credit card, I can pull out the dick. You want to sit in this house and be kept and be protected and provided for and go on vacations three or four times a year once to Disney World with the kids. You want to do all of these things. I had to work 25, 30 years of my life just to be able to talk to a woman, to have a woman as beautiful as you in all my right. house. And you think that I've got to the point where I can have you and you think that when I finally get to the top of this mountain that I'm just going, oh, I'm just going to give it to you. Nobody forced you, you to get into one person, value, but you should just—you you were should just born not looking like married. that. I've seen your old pictures from uh, from Facebook. You were born looking like that, Queen. You saw my. I Facebook. had to work to get here. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not saying that women don't have to work to get the place, but at the same time, like a man has to work his whole entire life just to be valuable enough to get you to say yes. Okay, I'd have made it. I'd have made it to the. Now I'm going to reap the fruits of my labor, <laughs> and that may be Tiffany House. <laughs> Shots out to Tiffany. Come on now. And if you're able to but steal by Tiffany, you know, it, it, I think it's an even swap, no swindle. I bought you uh, Tiffany. Money. I went to go see Tiffany. It's a, it's a fair trade. Come so on. So then now. your wife could cheat then? Do she pay bills like me? Um, Come against exactly. what? Question <laughs> answer right there. Come against what? <laughs> you can't do what a man does until you pay what a man pays, ma'am. So if your wife pays women half love, of the women bills, love she could to be cheat. men until it's time to pay for something. Until it's time to pull out that credit card and boss up. Hey, this mortgage is five thousand dollars a month, ma'am. Where am I twenty five hundred at? So she pays half the bills. She could. She cheat. don't want to do that. What woman want to do that? If no, she, this mortgage is five thousand a month. Her? This mortgage she is high, high, even better. This I'm mortgage asking. is five thousand yeah. a month. Not gonna steal I paid that. for the last it's, year. It, Where's your five grand? If y'all go fifty fifty, then she can cheat. Then now, see, I don't know about that fifty fifty. No, that's a whole nother story. I'm talking about when the man. Hey, pays hey, I, I think I might be cool with that. Yeah, hey, you know, but, <laughs> I think I might be cool with that on if she playing them 50 50, man. But you know, at some point in time, we have to. You can't suck no dick. There has to be. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, rule, it's rules and regulations. I'm sick of y'all. Don't, 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 don't get my mouth away. I'm sick of y'all. Don't get my mouth away. Nah, I say 50 50 and no cheating. That's just me. I wouldn't want my wife paying all my shit and she cheating on me and I wouldn't want to do the same shit. That's no, just I feel me. that. I feel that. I, I'm rocking yeah. with that. Like, you got to understand, like, this, his right? wife watching this shit. I ain't married yet. Listen, I'm single. I, I, I can say it. Don't, don't, fellas, do not incriminate yourself. Let me. Yeah, he, oh. he had to go fix the shit real quick. Yeah, I don't no, want no, nobody no, fucking my girl. If we together, if we together, man, fuck nobody else. If, if we together, <laughs> if we together, and we, and I'm, at, I'm at to a point where we need to go 50 50 I shouldn't have enough money to cheat. I don't got time or money to cheat. I need to be, I need to be working on my craft. When I was building myself up, and you was with me shooting in the gym, then yeah, you, that's a whole nother story. We talking about, no, your ass stay in this big ass house that I bought. Come on, child. Oh, your ass driving that goddamn car that yeah, I bought. I came ready made. It's oh, different. Fine ass, yeah, I'm already built. Now, you want with me shooting in the gym? Yeah, you in the gym. Oh, that's a whole different story, it's different man. For you. Now, if you down here at the bottom with me and we in the trenches and we sleeping on this goddamn air mattress together and you done roll with a nigga, yeah, I better, yeah, I'd be a fuck nigga if I did that to you. I ain't gonna count. But damn it, if I'm already up and you saw me at um at, at 11.45 on Friday, and like, ooh, God damn it, he looked like a old big player teddy bear nigga. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, I already built this. It come with different situations. A lot of these women don't want to build with a man, though. So you got to understand with a man that's built, 
It come with different shit. You can't drive a Nissan the same way you drive a Bentley, Queen. I'm already a Bentley. Don't now you buy you... no ugly truck. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I don't want to get triggered. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, man, hey, dog, I appreciate all that, but uh, yeah. you just popped your collar. I appreciate but it. But speaking of popping your collar, you yeah. know what time it is, right? What's up? Hey, school <laughs> clothes time. Hey, Playboy. Yes, sir. Show them what you got on. All right, man. I'm a... Give me a second to get up real quick. Hey, I'm hey. flying this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, man, look. Shoes. What are these? Dolce Gabbana. Yeah. Uh, the pants, Guapi, NBA, NBA Youngboy collab, Guapi. The shirt, denim tears, offset collab. Cool little thermal, Cartier Santos, and uh, Johnny Dane. Y'all fucking with me, right? 100%, baby. Yeah. Hey, uh, Amani, go ahead and show them what your fine ass wearing today. Uh -huh. All right now. Uh, real simple. I don't be all up like, you know. Playing that ain't but. simple. <laughs> um, uh, got my trap shoes on, Gucci mules, uh, Crocs, whatever. Um, I got these cargos from Zara, and then the shirt. Um, it's my friend, uh, Line. Um, you know, I'm always gonna support somebody. Give me merch. I'm gonna wear it. So wealthy. And that's it. That's what's up. Yo, Biz, mm -hmm. show them your school clothes. Show them a school clothes. Come on, baby. Uh, I went the ball main way on the jeans. Damn. Um, we went, uh, we went uh, merch way. Merch coming soon. Respectfully, T-shirts coming mm -hmm. soon. You know what I mean? Uh, jacket, I forgot. Don't let me get the line on the jacket. I don't remember the jacket. Go on lie on it and, real quick. And, and, the, and low, <laughs> low uh, J's for me. You got to tell about the hat, too. The ones. The oh, hat. B. Oh, yes. Thank you, sir. B.U., the official clothing sponsor of Trigger Alert. Salute. Salute to B.U. Shop B.U. if you want to get any of the B.U. merch. Salute to them guys. Man, they gave me some shit last night, man. I accidentally left it. Cause, you know, Jack, say less. I got you, bro. Okay. I got you. 3X. 3X? Yeah. Say less. Show enough. Yo, Nietzsche. Yes, sir. Man, show him your school clothes. Okay, I'll, 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 get in there, player. I'm gonna tip this. Okay. Uh, blue suede custom Jordans from Kicks USA. Make sure you follow them at Kicks USA. Uh, velour sweat suit from Bougie Fly Apparel. You can follow them at Bougie Fly Apparel. They always support me, love. Uh, custom ugly money piece from Status Jewelers. Follow them at Status Jewelers. <laughs> it's a little patty. Light day. Flood it out. Patty, boy. You know. Boy, you just, beat the game. Just Google it. <laughs> I don't want to do too much. Just, yeah. Shadur! <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing today. And man, I appreciate y'all brothers, man, uh, coming through the show today, man. Is there anything that Biz, Nietzsche, y'all want to say to New Jack Thriller City, man, before we get out of here? Because this ain't going to be the last time y'all come by the spot. I want to give you your flowers, sir, sure. because you opened up a lot of this podcast game, starting sure. with that This Is 50, when people wasn't did. on it. The, yeah, they wasn't on podcasts early in the game like Pod that. You was one did. of the first people to come with the podcast swag and you've been doing it over 10 years so salute to you sir because you have took your thing to a whole nother level right now i appreciate you having us yes you are one of the founders of this podcast game and that's for sure respectfully for sure. respectfully you that daddy facts Pod dead. Thank you. Boy, well, you might Pod need to have dead. that on a t shirt. Pod, Pod dead. dead. Pod yeah. dead. Pod dead. Man, thank you, man. I love y'all, man. Let's take some pictures. Yeah, T Rex. Take us out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.